Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, welcome everybody to the SEEK webinar, um, talking about web AR and some of the advancements in this new technology, which is really exciting. Uh, you know, we've been in the AR industry seat at SEEK here for several years now, and we've built a lot of different products, a lot of different types of experiences, and worked with small brands to the biggest brands in the world. Um, and uh, one of the biggest elements of friction that uh, there's always been is, well, why does this experience have to be in an app? Can't we just put it on the web and send someone a link? And, and because of uh, you know, limitations to technology, we haven't been able to do that up to now, but um, um, some of the new things we're gonna talk about today are enabling some very exciting new possibilities here. So, um, so again, Seek AR Gone Appless, as my co-founder likes to say. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, so first off, uh, who am I? I always like to know who I'm listening to when I'm on a webinar. Um, my name is John Cheney. I'm the CEO and founder of Seek. Um, I'm a husband, father. This, here's my family here. Um, four little kids that are, that are all amazing, three boys and a girl. I'm a whitewater kayaker. This is what I would rather be doing almost any day of the week. Um, that's a that's a waterfall that I just kayaked down and that's on my way out. Um, pianist, this is how I that's how I unwind most days. I love tech, I love golf and being outdoors and adventure and so much more. So um, I really just can find joy in, in a lot of things. Um, so Seek, a little bit of background on us. Uh, when we first started, we launched an app called uh, Seek Rewards, um, which is still active today. Uh, most easily described as the Pokemon Go, uh, or as Pokemon Go meets, uh, you know, real companies, brands, and products. You could go out and uh, use location-based augmented reality to, to find cool things out in the world and, and be able to win prizes or discounts and offers instead of trying to find Pikachu. And so um, Seek Rewards is still live. Seek XR, uh, most easily described as the YouTube of AR, a platform where anyone can publish, share, and discover AR content. Um, launched that uh, coming up on a year ago. Um, Seek Studio was just launched recently in about May, uh, which really focuses on helping anybody be able to create AR content quickly and publish that to Seek XR and then Seek View, which we'll talk about some today as well. So um, so bottom line is we've been in uh, in the AR business for quite some time and, and had a lot of exposure and I've had many opportunities to, um, to visit all the all the big, big players on the tech side, on the platform side, um, software side, and uh, have had opportunities to um, to really just stay on top of this industry in a way that uh, that has allowed Seek to come out with some some pretty compelling products. And um, we've worked again with, like I said, some of the biggest companies in the world and and amazing amazing people out there. There's just a few examples of people that we work with. So, with that being said, let's dive right in here. Um, you know, first off, just want to, uh, I, I hope that anybody on this webinar um, uh, has faith in augmented reality as a, as a technology. Um, again, I, I kind of take that for granted sometimes because I'm in it all day, every day, and I see the amazing applications. I believe 10 years from now, um, AR will be as ubiquitous as video. Um, there are so many different things that can be done with it. Um, here are some of the projections, by the way, um, from not from us, but from uh, Zion Market Research in this case. Uh, by 2021, this is kind of what the AR versus VR landscape will be like. And, and one of the big uh, issues around VR is the additional hardware that is required. Um, you know, having to go and plug in and, and even with the new Oculus Go, which is great, you still have to have to buy an additional piece of hardware and go and do it. Whereas AR right now is immediately available to people on their phones. And in the future, there may be, you know, maybe magically figures their stuff out. Maybe Apple comes out with Apple glasses or somebody comes out with some sort of um, eyewear, whether it's glasses or contacts or who knows, something embedded into our brain, um, some crazy chip that we haven't thought of yet. But, um, but AR in general right now has the ability to take off because of lots of the technology that has come out due to Apple and uh, Google's um, 
or you know work on their on their devices on their operating systems. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of AR Kit or AR Core or heard these terms, and and these are are technologies that have made possible the building blocks basically for augmented reality. So AR is growing and it's here to stay. Um, so a few important facts to consider before we uh, before we jump in any further. Um, you know, first of all. If, if we can do web AR, that's great, but what if consumers want to download apps? It turns out that they still really don't. Um, and it depends on the type of app, of course, which we'll get to in a second. But 51% of consumers out there do not want to download an app. They, uh, you know, and, and, you know, you look at some of the, the breakdown of this, an additional, you know, 20, almost 25% here will only download up to two apps a month. Um, and so, you know, take that, you've got about 75% of people that really don't like downloading apps. They're not going to do it. They're certainly not going to do it um, for specific brands. And that's one place where it's really struggled. The most popular apps are, are going to be these, right? The, the central platforms that kind of bring everything together, you know, um, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook Messenger, Google Search, Google Maps, Instagram, Snapchat. And um, I'm sure all of you on the call here could look at your phone and have most of these apps. Uh, on your, on your own devices. Uh, but again, people don't want to download uh, apps for very narrow use cases usually. They, they wanna be able to access that as easily as possible. And that might be an app. There, there are certainly things that I enjoy doing in an app, uh, maybe visiting a bank, you know, my bank, uh, you know, logging into Chase and managing accounts or paying off a credit card bill or something like that that is done really easily through an app. But um, the web is growing um, in capability and as that happens, um, apps will will become a little uh, a little less relevant. I don't believe apps are going anywhere. I think they're going to be here for quite some time. But the, the app landscape will certainly change. Um, for now, consumers, especially for e-commerce, just really don't like to download these apps. Um, but in about 18 months to 24 months, uh, something called Web XR will be available, and um, that will enable almost anything uh, that you can do now in an app, you'll be able to do on the web. And if you take, uh, you know, and an, one, one good example of, of this change is uh, Fortnite, a uh, super popular game right now, um, available on virtually any platform. I mean, they're on iOS, Android now, uh, you know, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Twitch, I mean, or, or uh, Switch, I'm sorry, the Nintendo Switch. Uh, you can definitely watch them on Twitch. I think it's the most viewed game right now. But the point is this um, Fortnite recently launched the beta for Android. And instead of doing it through the Google Play Store, they just said, hey, come to our site and download it directly to your phone. They completely bypass the Google Play Store and therefore bypass the 30% commission they would have to pay to Google for all in-app purchases and Fortnite has tons of in-app purchases that generates virtually all of their revenue. The game is free to play, except for you can, you can change the look of your character and different things like that. And they avoid the app store and that 30% tax by uh, going direct to consumer through their website. So that's pretty, that's pretty big. So, so now let's talk about a little bit what type of uh, augmented reality is possible in an appless environment. Um, not everything is possible yet. This is the beginning. And so let's talk about some of those things that are possible. Um, the first and maybe the most obvious that, um, that I think is the most useful right now is product viewing. Um, this is super easy for an average consumer to understand and adopt. Um, anytime you're shopping for a product online, you're going to click on a picture, you're gonna click on the video, you're gonna, you're gonna do anything you can to visualize this product to determine whether or not you're going to purchase it. And as you do that, um, the better, I, I know that when I'm on Amazon and I see a product that has just amazing pictures and I can see what kind of the scale is and, and, and it gives me tons of information, I'm more likely to buy that product even if it's a little more expensive um, because I know what it's going to be like in my environment, in my life. Um, with augmented reality, this, uh, this opens up incredible opportunities uh, because you can now, this, this picture of this chair right here is actually an augmented reality chair. Um, it's not real, it's just sitting there, but I know exactly what that is going to look like in my environment. Um, I have a couple stories about this that I'll get into later, but um, 
part of what I like about this is it feels, uh, it almost feels basic when you try it. You're like, hey, you, you click on it and you try it and you say, oh, that was really easy and almost so easy um, that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel incredibly magical, but it feels incredibly useful and I believe drives those sales in the way that you want. Um, now, in order for this to work properly, it does have to be integrated and implemented properly. And we'll talk about some of the things that we can avoid or you can avoid as you do that. Um, other types of AR that are possible, a face filter, there's my mugshot with a, with a filter on it. This is done on the web actually. Um, so uh, anybody who's used Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook has, has seen these face filters and, and used them a lot, or maybe you've received texts from grandchildren or friends of their babies, you know, with, with puppy dog ears and, and face filters are something that's been a lot of fun. And, uh, many people I believe don't even realize they're using augmented reality when they see, um, these types of things, um, you know, in a, in an e-commerce environment, this could be very practical for makeup, eyewear, hats, and then of course, fun, shareable content. Um, for, for virtually any brand. Um, Marker-based AR. So this is any time you have a, uh, you know, so, something to point at for the phone to reference in order to position the AR experience. So this, you know, this animation here, I'm sorry, this model recognizes, or the, the, the camera recognizes this and then places that model on top of it. And then you can rotate around it and it looks like that, that model will hold its position um, in, in relation to that QR code right there. And this is cool, but it, it still is an additional step of friction um, that, because you have to physically have something. Now this can be very useful if you're doing something uh, like on a movie poster uh, or a billboard or in a book or maybe on a restaurant menu where you want people to be able to see what that dish looks like before they order it right from the menu. And, and you, can, you can have a, a website you know, recognize different elements in your menu or on that movie poster uh, at the theater and, and then make pretty incredible augmented reality content. Um, the most capable in terms of uh, the most interactive and most customizable content is marker-based AR right now, but it can be done on the web now. It does not have to be in an app. And that's a big deal. Um, some of you may have seen the the campaign with 19 crimes uh, and, and that, you know, the, the alcohol brand that did just an unbelievable uh, AR campaign and making their bottles come to life and stories of all the people, the pictures on the bottles, all of that can be done on the web now. When they did that, it was only possible through their app. And so they had to get people to download the app and then go to the store and look at those experiences or buy the, buy the bottles, take them home and do it there. But being able to just scan a QR code, for example, which takes you right to the website, and then it's working immediately, that's really powerful and an easy experience to, um, to access that. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about product viewing right now because this is some of the new stuff that's happening um, that's been enabled recently by some of the things that, that Apple has done. Um, they're, they're driving some of the innovation here. So um, Apple's new USDZ file and AR Quick Look are the technologies that they announced, I think in June of this year and uh, Essentially, what this means is that augmented reality is now a native feature of iPhone, right, on iOS 12. iOS 12 comes out on September 12th, so we're August 28th. That's about two weeks from, I think it's two weeks from tomorrow. Um, people will be able to download iOS 12. You can download the beta right now. I have it on my phone. I'll demo it in a second. But you can tap on any of these objects, and they will it will immediately pull up the camera, you'll be able to see that object and use it. And, and this is wonderful. Um, it, you know, it, it's going to make augmented reality much easier to do, but <laughs> true to form uh, for Apple, they came out with a totally new format um, that's unsupported by anybody right now. Um, computers don't know what to do with these things. And so um, actually implementing this and using it for your products on a website wherever you want to, to utilize this technology is actually pretty difficult right now um, because it's, you're going to have most of the people out there, or I'm sorry, probably about half of the people out there that are viewing the content on an Android device or perhaps on a desktop won't be able to view this new format. And so 
Um, there's a lot of problems to solve around that. So let's talk about some of those. Um, first of all, anyone who's ever dealt with 3D file formats, there are a bunch of them, right? And I don't need to talk about each of these. Um, some of the most common ones are gonna be these top three, a CAD file, uh, anybody who's ever designed a product and sent it off to a factory to be, um, to be produced, started with a CAD file, it's, it's, you know, it's Autodesk's um, standard file for, for uh, creating uh, products and, and um, sketches of, of, of the things that they're producing and sending out into the market. Um, some of the newer ones are GLTF. This is kind of, this has been called the, uh, the JPEG of 3D. Um, you know, JPEG came out a while ago and uh, many, many years, 20 years ago, and it was a, it was a highly compressed version of a picture file that, that still, you know, maintained its quality. And that was a big deal at the time. GLTF has been able to do this. USDZ has a lot of similar features to GLTF, but offers a few more uh, pieces of flexibility. But again, while it is an open file type, it, uh, it's so new and people are still trying to figure out how to use it. Uh, then you have device types, right? iOS, Android, Magic Leap uh, that just came out with their glasses, HoloLens, which has been out for a while, Oculus Rift, um, which is technically a VR device, but they are moving towards adding AR into that. Meta is another AR. Um, Apple glasses don't exist yet, but they've been announced. And so you have to expect them to come and many more that are gonna be out there, right? And so when you have all of these file types and these device types, creating some way to pull it all together, some standard is really, really difficult. Um, and that's why I think you don't see uh, as much AR content as there could be out there right now. The AR content is amazing. Every company should be doing it. But when they step up to the plate, they say, okay, how do I do this, right? Um, what about the different software platforms like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram? Do I do it there? Do I do it in my own app? Um, you know, now, now the question can be added, do I do it on the web? How do I get this out there? What devices do I support? Um, if I use AR Kit, then it works on iOS. If I use AR Core, then it works on Android. And everybody has their own SDK and different, different uh, you know, formulas for how to make it work best. But that creates a lot of headache and problems for, um, for the content creators themselves. So uh, you know, Android doesn't support USDZ. Um, mobile can't read most of these 3D file formats. Uh, there's very few of these. They might be able to pull up an OBJ, but but only a picture of it probably. Um, computers can't handle AR formats because they don't have a camera. Uh, even on a laptop, you know, it might be able to do a little bit with a face filter or something like that. Um, but they don't. They, they could. You couldn't use your computer, for example, to visualize furniture in your room. Um, what will the next format be, right? We've got all these, what, there, there's bound to be more. And so how do we support those? How do you, how do you move forward? How do I convert my files into the proper formats? Um, do I need to have multiple links to support different devices? So if there are in fact different types of, of files that these different devices, you know, support, then when I land on a product page, do I just need to click on, oh, here's the iOS AR link, here's the Android link, here's the Magic Leap link. And here's the Apple Glasses link. That that doesn't make sense. So um, so that's another challenge to to try to overcome. How do I ensure the files aren't too big? You don't want people having to download a 300 megabyte file, um, which many 3D models are, in order to view it. Um, and then you know what's what's next? What's beyond this? How do you keep up and continue to uh, to deliver for 3D and AR? And so here at Seek, we've been working hard on on and asking all of these questions and trying to figure out what is the best way to do it. And uh, our, our newest solution is called SeekView. And this product allows um, companies to enable this new AR functionality on their website with very, very little work. Um, you essentially upload the files into our system and we spit back out a link. And that seems very simple because it is. Um, and and the, the best way to describe it and, and talk about some of how we're doing things um, is it's easy to compare to YouTube. So uh, with YouTube, you give them a video, they give you a link. Um, if you gave YouTube this video, if anyone uploaded a video to YouTube back in 2008 or you know 10 years ago, um, when YouTube was still relatively new, it, it clearly didn't have as much capability and functionality as it does today, um, the, the number of devices that YouTube worked on in 2008 is a fraction of the ones that worked 
today or that work today. Um, YouTube works on 10,000 different device types from, from every single TV model in the world to uh, computers, uh, laptops, desktops, tablets, mobile phones, anything can view a YouTube video. But what didn't change during that whole time was the source video. They didn't, they didn't write back and say, hey, you know, we're supporting a new type of screen now. We need you to re-upload your video in a new format. That, 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 doesn't, that didn't happen. And right now in the AR industry, that literally is what happens. When a new technology or a new platform, like Magic Leap, for example, just came out, you have to start over. You, have to, you can use some of the same assets, but you have to rebuild it in their environment and publish it. And then, it, it, so it's just very, very difficult. And, and companies can't hope to, to keep up with that. They're not going to be able to keep up with that. YouTube gives you a link that stays, or that gets stronger and stronger and stronger, but it stays the same. Um, I can click on that link from 10 years ago and it still works. It just works better. The streaming has been improved. There's more devices. The, the buffering is going to be better, whatever. All of those things have been improved because YouTube made this smart link smarter. That's exactly what we do with SeekView, right? You give us a model of this Tesla right here and we plop it into SeekView and then we make sure it works on every single device, right? You click on that link on any device and it will work. So um, I think the best way to, to show this, and I think, you know, um, a live demo makes this really easy to understand. So let's pull up a quick time here really quickly. And we're going to go file new movie recording. And we're going to move this over to the other screen. And welcome to my office. And drag this over here. Okay, so now we have, let's see here, okay. All right, hopefully everybody can see that now. So here we have uh, a website, right? We're, we're just in, we're in Safari right now. Um, you can see that. And, and there's different products here that you can view. Um, you know, here's that chair that we, that we just saw a minute ago. We're gonna go ahead and just click on this and, and we'll just try it, right? So whenever you click on a seek view link, you first are presented with a 3D view. So this 3D view, you can look at it from all angles, you can zoom in on it and check it out and, and that's great. And then when you're ready to say, okay, I wanna, I wanna see what this looks like in my space, then here we are in AR. And this object is actually life size. Oh, it looks like I could stand up and go, go sit in that chair. So I can stand up and I can walk around it. I can, of course, I can grab it and turn it and place it somewhere else in the room. Um, I can make it smaller, but when I do that, it comes up with, with a little indicator that tells me how big it is. And then when I get to 100%, it actually kind of snaps into place and you can feel it on the phone. And I, again, I can get bigger, smaller, whatever I want, but I can place this wherever I want. And you know, now that I'm here in this, in this uh, office, I can see this and say, hey, let's, looks like that'll look all right right here. And I can save that picture and that just saves right to my camera roll. I can then text that to whoever I want or post it to social media. And, and I now know exactly what that chair looks like in my life. Let's use another example really quickly. Um, a hot tub. A hot tub is a relatively high, um, high cost object uh, or high, high price product. Um, and I, I know that I've talked to many people, especially in demoing this to them that they, they want to buy a hot tub, but they're not sure if it's gonna fit in their backyard. And so what better way to see if it fits than to actually place it there without having to, to actually move it in. So we'll switch to AR here, and this is gonna be a very big thing. Let's see, if, see what a hot tub looks like here in the Seek office um, here in this meeting room. So I can actually come up and I can check out the different features of this hot tub. This, is, this one is done by Bullfrog spas here and uh, they have amazing hot tubs and I can now see what that looks like right I can move it around again I can I can look at it in a smaller way if I want but life size I know exactly what that will look like if we can manage to convince the building owners to let us bring that in here so really cool I want to show one more um, demo of this because I think it's really really neat um, <clears throat> we've been working with some news agencies 
on uh, you know being able to allow their uh, their readers, their viewers to participate more in the news. And so, what better way to let them do that than to give them a scene? In this case, this is a a fake murder scene. Um, you can see on here. Uh, I can zoom in. This is our CTO, Chris White, in our uh, in our break room. And you know, we we took a bunch of pictures. Actually, this was this was done by taking a bunch of pictures and then combining them together to create this 3D model. And we haven't cleaned it up. There's some artifacts you can see that we could certainly do better on, but this allows you to see something pretty cool. So, but if we switch this to AR view here, we can then actually walk around and examine it for ourselves, right? So here I am, you can see, you know, there's our normal office and then here I am in this scene and I can actually, I've picked up my laptop, I'm walking around so that I can show you guys this, but I can, I can get right down on the ground. I can look at the different things, examine, you know, see if I can figure out how he was murdered. I can walk around and look at all of this stuff. So again, this is all part of a 3D model, but you know, you can, you can let your imagination go wild on how you could use this. Cool to use it for a fake murder scene, but, uh, but there's so many applications for this technology um, in, in allowing customers to not only visualize your product in their, uh, in their environment, but also to potentially take them into your environment, right? So, um, so anyway, that's, that's pretty incredible. Um, now I want to show another piece of this demo and I'm going to do it. Let's see here. Some of these webinar controls get in my way. We're going to move them out of the way a little bit. <clears throat> so, Let's come back to this same demo site here um, where we're showing some of these different objects or even better, better let's, go to, um, let's go to this site right here. Um, so here's you know, a, a popular brand out there, website, and a bunch of their different products you can, um, but you know, we're on a computer now. So when I click on this, it pulls up a nice little loading modal and it lets me view this table, right? And of course, if I'm on my phone, I can see what this looks like in AR, see if it's gonna fit in my kitchen. But here I am on the computer and this still works. This is a beautiful view. It works on mobile, works on desktop um, to be able to view it that way. Now, if I come over, interest, th th this is something that I think is really interesting. If you look at, if you go to Apple's website um, where they're actually demoing this cool new feature, they're not hosting this properly and so when you click on this, it just downloads this weird USDZ file. And if I click on it to open it, it says, hey, sorry, I don't know what to do with a USDZ. And so, you know, this is great, but you can't host a file like this on your website and then just have people that don't happen to have iOS 12 Safari, exactly the, the, the things that you need to make that AR view work, you can't have it just fail. Um, and so with SeekView, we're properly hosting that and ensuring that customers have a great experience no matter what device they're on. And as new devices become available, as new protocol becomes available, you don't have to go through and update your website again or create new, you know, upload new 3D files. The link just gets smarter and it will start to work on more devices. So that's what we do with SeekView. So let's get back into this presentation here and um, and kind of finish up, we're, uh, we, we certainly won't take a full hour here. We'll probably be done in about five minutes. So, um, you know, the next, the next component of this to think about is how do you create content? You know, whether you're hosting it through SeekView or whatever you're doing, you got to figure out how to get your products into a 3D file format that enables AR viewing. Um, even if you're doing it in your own app, you're going to need to, uh, you're going to need to have some sort of 3D file to start with. Um, most product companies have design files like a CAD file. Um, you know, you, you can take that and as long as you have somebody who knows what they're doing, they can convert that into the proper formats. Um, of course, we do that here at C. You could send us your CAD files and we can, we can turn it all into the right formats. Um, scanning technology is getting easier. It's getting better. Um, you can even scan some things with your mobile phone. There's an app called Clone, Q-L-O-N-E that uh, is free actually and allows you to scan 3D objects. You just set down a, uh, uh, a kind of a QR code looking thing on the table and 
put your object in the middle of it and then scan it with clone and then clone will eliminate everything um, that they see in that uh, QR code that lets you uh, then be left with a nice 3D model. Um, there are also dedicated devices and these range from $300 to $25,000 depending on how accurate and how clean you want that model to look. I would imagine for most uh, major companies, um, you would go more on the, on the high end there to, um, to ensure that you have a very accurate model. It gets it down to like the nanometer. It's amazing some of the, some of the devices they have. And uh, if, for anybody that might be interested in, in um, you know, that type of technology, please feel free to follow up with me and I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. But again, most companies, most big companies already have 3D files of their products. Many of them have them just sitting around, but they just don't really know what to do with them. Um, if you dig into, into some of your files, I was at a company uh, just last week and, uh, and I said, hey, do you have a 3D file of this product? And I knew they had to have it because I knew that they had designed it and manufactured it themselves. And it took them about eight emails to <laughs> poke around and find the right person. But finally someone said, yeah, here it is and sent it over. So you know, odds are large companies are going to have many of these things. Um, entertainment companies, uh, you know, someone like Viacom, you know, with Nickelodeon or Disney or Pixar, you know, of course those companies are going to have thousands of models. Um, from the movies, TV shows in which the, you know, those, those different models are used. Um, you know, we, we worked with Universal Pictures uh, last year on the, the Mummy, the new The Mummy movie. And, uh, you know, they had tons of 3D files from that because there's lots of CGI used, of course, today in, in many of the movies. So um, I could go on all day about how to, how, to, how to get those 3D files into the right format, but companies are going to have to approach that and say, hey, what's the best way to to move forward here. But once you have those 3D files, then hosting them is a, is a cake. So, so what's now, what, what now? You know, I, I think really get ahead of the curve. This is something that's here now. Uh, in two weeks, um, companies or customers are gonna start, uh, you know, expecting that, that you're gonna have this because your competitors are gonna have it or you're gonna have it and then your competitors are gonna be behind. But this is going to start to be a standard where you have to be able to see that technology, in, you know, the, 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 the products in your own space. Aside from that, um, I read uh, an article a couple, a couple days ago about a company called STM Goods. Um, it's out of Australia. They're like uh, Ikea or Wayfair, you know, furniture company. And they recently published a new AR app. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they haven't done it on their, on their website yet. But since implementing AR technology in their app, they've seen a 30% lift in sales from that app traffic, which is unbelievable. 30% um, increase just because people are able to see what that furniture looked like in their home. And one of the, so one of the issues is, I, I'll share something I learned from another major company um, that also does furniture they have an app that actually has AR already in there, but only 8% of their traffic comes from their app, of their overall traffic. 92% of their traffic comes from mobile web or desktop web. And so that means 92% of their customers are missing out on this potential 30% lift in sales. So enabling this AR or a 3D view to fall back on if it doesn't have AR enabled on the device is a massive, massive potential increase in sales. 30% is a big number in my book. Um, just a couple quick stories. Um, I was sitting down with a, a potential investor in our company um, just a, a few days ago, and he was talking about actually, I showed him this Bullfrog Spot demo, and he had actually been shopping for that exact spa. And uh, he said that the only thing, the cost wasn't a concern to him. He, he knew that he liked the spa, but he didn't know if it fit. That was his only concern left. And unfortunately, it's really difficult to bring a spa down. He didn't know what it was going to look like. It, I mean, obviously, he could measure it out, but he just didn't know if it was going to be too tight or feel weird. And he said, if I had this, which apparently I will in two weeks, <laughs> then uh, my, my decision is going to get a lot easier. Um, I talked to another friend who actually bought a bullfrog spa and he said that because of the way their house was situated in order to get the spa in their back in his backyard, 
they literally had to lift the spa with a crane over the house and then guide it in and, and drop it on the deck. And that is a very, very tough buying experience um, to convince somebody to have to do that, especially if they're not 100% sure they know it fits. And so if you can eliminate that concern and allow the customer to see your product in their life, it, it solves that concern very quickly. Another quick story, um, which I think I saw in the comments here from somebody um, uh, talking about this exact thing, but he, he, he wants to buy a Ford F-150. He wants to buy this new, you know, beautiful Raptor truck that is super fast and super awesome. And that's, you know, another story for another time, but um, great, great truck, but it is a little bit wider, a little bit taller than other trucks. And it's a $75,000 vehicle. Um, and th this, this guy wants to buy it, but the dealership won't let him drive it home to see if it fits because it's 30 miles, you know, one way to get there. And so they didn't want to put that many miles on a new, uh, on a new truck without knowing if they were going to get a sale or without knowing that dealership is pretty ridiculous. If you ask me, they should, they should most definitely let him do that. But put that aside, if you had an accurate two scale model being hosted with Seekview and viewing that web AR experience, he can then click on that, pull it up in his driveway, and he knows exactly how big it is. He can measure to see if it fits in his garage and problem solved, right? And so the, the world is going to move towards this new AR space. Um, mass consumer adoption is around the corner. I believe that mass consumer adoption of AR where people actually know they're using AR. People have been using AR with Snapchat filters for years. They just didn't, don't really know it is. Pokemon Go, some people know it was AR. Many people don't. Um, but using AR in their everyday life is something that's going to start growing very, very quickly because Apple has now made it a native feature that comes out here in a couple weeks. And every product site is going to start enabling viewing of their products in AR using this feature. And uh, how they go about doing that, it's a different story, but the point is it's going to happen. And so as AR grows in this kind of product space, it will certainly open up other opportunities, but I think this is what really starts it. So make sure you're ready. Um, I'm happy to, you know, that's all I have prepared today. Um, I'm happy to answer any individual questions. Uh, from anybody. I'm going to close out of this presentation here so that I can, well, first, you know, here's my email, john at seekxr.com. Um, feel free to, to message me directly if you have any questions. Um, looks like Marcos had a comment here. It gives the customer decision-making abilities that weren't possible anymore. Absolutely. Um, Eric's story here. Um, so if there are any individual questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to, you know, take calls or, or respond to emails or inquiries if you have any questions, not just about SeekView, but in a AR in general, I'm happy to help um, as I've been in the industry for a while and, and hopefully have, have learned a little bit. So um, thank you all so much for, uh, for joining. Um, this was recorded. I will um, send out a link to the recording to anybody that made it and those that, uh, that didn't make it. I know that there were quite a few people that signed up for it that weren't able to make it, so we missed you. Um, so thank you all, have a wonderful day and uh, we'll talk to you later.